Good morning. I've got some good news to share. Uh, for those of you who have been following my video series on flip project number two, we are all done with this flip. We've got everything uh, fixed up as we wanted to do. Uh, I've already removed all of the staging furniture and we've already accepted an offer. We were on the market for nine days, so that was pretty quick, especially for a house with only one bathroom, so I'm happy with that. Um, but now that everything is done, I want to give you a tour and show you what the house looks like after the changes. If you haven't already seen my first video in this series, where I did an initial walkthrough when we first bought the house, go ahead and watch that. Click the link up in the top right here. Uh, that way you can see what the house looked like initially and you, and you can compare it to what it looks like now. Uh, so let's take a little tour of the finished product. All of the doors throughout the house got fresh new white paint along with the trim throughout. As you can see, I installed some light color wide plank flooring. I'll put my hand down here for reference so you could see how wide these planks are. Here's an edge, here's the other edge. So they're nice big wide planks. I really like that look. Um, I'm very happy with the look of this floor. It looks a little bit kind of orangey or yellowish on video, but it's more of a neutral blonde color wood. Uh, it's as close as I could get to what I wanted. There were products that I liked a little bit better, but they were two and a half times the price. And in an entry level house like this, it's just not justifiable. So I think, uh, I think I did good. I picked a good floor. I ran the flooring down the hallway with no transition strip. That was a bear to figure out. It took me a little while and watching some YouTube videos from some flooring experts on how to tackle that issue. I won't go into details because it's too involved. And then looking into the living room here, I ran the floor in there as well, the laminate floor. Um, and again, all the paint throughout the house, as I mentioned in a previous video, is the gray that was already here when we bought the place. It was painted in the not too distant past uh, and it's still in good shape and it's a nice shade of gray so we kept that. Continuing in the dining room here, I installed a new pendant light. There was originally a boob light here. I took that out for something more modern and more distinctive for a dining area. And then in the kitchen, for those of you who have been watching the series, you will recognize the uh, cabinetry and the countertops, the granite countertops. However, the flooring is brand new. It's a uh, white marble looking vinyl plank tile. I really like the way this turned out. I think it's a very uh, neutral and classy and classic looking design. And it complements the existing white appliances, which we decided not to change out uh, this is an entry-level house, a more affordable option, and we just couldn't justify replacing relatively new appliances. They're only four years old uh, with all new appliances. There's nothing wrong with them. They're in good condition. They are very basic grade, uh, but we figure, you know what, at this price point, if whoever buys the house wants something fancier, they are welcome to spend the money and change them out themselves but we're providing them with good functional appliances as they are. Continuing down the hallway here, I continued the laminate flooring. You can see there are a lot of jogs in the walls here, this and doorways. This was a really uh, challenging hallway for me. I've installed a lot of laminate to this point, but it was a challenge. Bedroom number one, the smallest bedroom. We left the existing LED light fixture, the same gray walls, and the uh, same laminate floors that I put throughout the rest of the house. I prefer not to put carpet in houses. Wall-to-wall -wall carpet 
I've pulled up a lot of it in several different houses and you would not believe the filth that collects under wall-to-wall -wall carpet. It just traps and holds so much dust and granular dirt. Um, so I'm just, I'm not a huge fan of it. And also being that we're in Florida, wall-to-wall -wall carpet when it's humid, it gets kind of moist feeling. It's not like it's saturated wet with water, but when you walk barefoot on carpet in Florida houses, it can have like a damp, I don't know, it just, it feels gross to me. I don't like it personally. Plus, a lot of people have allergies and because of the dust issue with carpet, um, I just prefer to put wall to wall, or not wall to wall, laminate flooring in bedrooms. Um, that may change in the future though, because I am doing a lot of the work, most of the work on these flips. And, and for me, installing laminate is very time consuming. And I may consider on the next flip having a professional install wall to wall carpet in just the bedrooms. Uh, I would still put laminate in the living, in the dining, in the hallway, but uh, it may change in the future on future flips with the laminate in bedrooms. Anyway, the closet in bedroom number one. We'll take a look at the broom closet here in the hallway. This was initially a closet with shelves in it, uh, but the problem is this house did not have anywhere to store a vacuum or a broom or a mop. So we decided to repurpose this closet as a broom closet. Mom hung a, uh, I don't know what you call this, but you stick a broom, the handle of a broom in here and it holds it. It's really cool. Ow, now my finger's stuck. Ow! Continuing into bedroom number two at the end of the hallway. This is the second largest bedroom. The same LED light fixture that was already here when we bought the house. The same gray wall paint. The new laminate flooring that I installed. The closet with the new shelves and clothes rod. Into the largest bedroom, bedroom number three, which I guess would be the master since it's the largest. Same LED light fixture, same gray paint. New laminate flooring. And the same closet. All of the closets in this house, all the bedroom closets, are roughly the same size, um, which kind of sucks for people who have a lot of clothes, but uh, you know, the house was built in 1959. This is, this is what you get, especially in an entry level house. So let's take a look at the bathroom now. I installed the same white marble looking vinyl tile floor. Looks very nice. The existing vanity that was here matches nicely as was as is the mirror and the existing light fixture. The bathroom really didn't need that much work. Uh, the shower surround here and the tub the vanity, the toilet, the mirror, all this was done. All I had to do really was the flooring. And boy, did that make a huge look. It was previously kind of a tan color uh, sheet vinyl and it looked kind of dated, even though it wasn't that old. It was only a few years old. It looked dated and uh, it just, it needed an upgrade. So let's head outside now and I'll give you a tour of the exterior. Starting at the front steps here, I stained the front steps as well as the porch, a medium gray color, along with the carport. We'll have to excuse the dirtiness of it. We had a uh, good rain yesterday and it just mucked everything up. The front door I painted a Sherwin-Williams color called Endless Sea. It's a really beautiful medium blue. I like it a lot. The siding is a light gray called Touch of Gray. Uh, the siding is brick. It was originally red brick. Normally, I'm against painting red brick. However, the brick was already in really bad condition. Uh, there was already paint splattered all over it from decades of having the soffits at the top painted and people dripping paint down the siding and just being sloppy about it. So it needed to be painted at this point. There wasn't much we could do. 
Uh, the window sashes are painted just a plain bright white to offset the gray siding and give a little bit of accent to the house. For the sake of the current owner's privacy, I'm not going to show the full exterior of the front of the house. I just want to respect people's privacy. Continuing into the carport and through the breezeway, this leads you to the side door. That's the door that leads into the dining room. And if you continue through, it leads you to the backyard, as well as the laundry. But let's take a look at the backyard first. It's a really nice backyard for an entry-level house. It's a good size. And great for pets. If someone has a dog and they want to finish fencing off the back there. When we bought the house, the fencing was done like this and we just didn't have the budget to finish it off. But the next owner is welcome to do that. Here's a view of the rear of the home. This white area here is actually the semi-detached utility room which has the laundry in it. Obviously that's not ideal, but as I've said, this house was built in 1959. Actually, in past videos I said the house was built in 55. I don't know why I thought that. The house was built in 59. Uh, people's expectations and standards of living back then were different, so you have issues to contend with like a three bedroom, one bath house, and a semi-detached laundry. That's just the way it is with these older houses. Especially in Florida, having semi-detached laundry. Very common with these older homes. So let's take a look at the utility room and the laundry now. Welcome to the beautiful utility room. I'm being sarcastic. Uh, watch our past videos and you'll see that, I think it was in the first video where I talked about this space. And this is an improvement. We did put up some plywood. We had the ceiling finished off by a carpenter and the walls. Previously, the light fixture was mounted directly overhead and it was a bit of an issue because it hangs low enough that taller people could hit their head on it. I actually hit a ladder, carrying a ladder out on the light bulb, so we thought, you know what, it would be safer to move it over there. But here's the utility room. It's a good space for storing your lawnmower, ladders, any other kind of yard equipment or tools. Beyond the storage area is the laundry area. Just to dress it up and make it look a little nicer and a little cleaner, we put up um, paneling on the walls just to make it look a little nicer. I installed a shelf there so people can put their laundry soap and bleach up there above where your washing machine is going to go, the dryer next to that. You can see we got a new water heater. And I also stained excuse me, the concrete floor to match the concrete outside. All right, folks, so there you have it. That's the finished product on flip project number two. I hope you like it. Uh, leave some comments below. Let me know what you think. Be kind in your replies. Mom and I did do about 90% of the work ourselves. Uh, we did hire out some things. Uh, if it was like a safety issue or just too big of a project or something that I wasn't experienced in, we hired it out. But for the most part, we did most of the work. Um, so I'd love to know what you think. Let me know below. And I want to thank you for joining me. And stay tuned if you enjoy these kind of videos. I will be making more. Uh, we're currently in the process of looking for flip project number three. We hope to get another three bedroom home, hopefully with two bathrooms, or even better yet, we would like to find a four bed, two bath home. Uh, those are very, very hot right now. At the lower price point, it is very hard to find an affordable four bed, two bath home, both for flippers and for home buyers. Most of those homes are exponentially expensive because they're in high demand and low volume available. So stay tuned and come on back when you see a notification for video, what will it be? Let's see, 3.1, because it'll be our third flip project, the first video of that series on the third flip. So I hope to see you there. Thanks for joining me.